the 19 guys going all the time, and uh, that, that's what you need to be a champion, and that's what we got. Here's Hodge to Cashman. Back to Dallas Smith, a shot. Oh! I just give the puck to Bobby Orr. <laughs> Let Bobby do all he can with it. Not off. Bobby Orr. Behind the net, the Sanderson to Orr! And we're back at uh, Twin Souvenirs on Yawkey Way across from Fenway Park for another one of our Nesson snapshots. Hello again, everybody. I'm Tom Larson. And we're continuing to occupy what otherwise would have been hockey hours here on Nesson for the Bruins of 94-95 with this flashback look at the Stanley Cup championship team of 1969 and 70. As the strike or lockout has gone on, we have now arrived at the postseason from 25 years ago. The four teams that made it into the playoffs in the East Division that year were the Blackhawks, the Bruins, the Red Wings, and the Rangers. The Bruins' first-round opponents were the Rangers. The first game of the series, April 8, 1970, was at Boston Garden. That afternoon, the Red Sox opened their season against the New York Yankees, a ball game they won 4-3. Bill Spaceman Lee working three and two-thirds innings of shutout relief in that win over New York. But the Bruins and Rangers match is our focus, and it marked the first time in 11 years that the two clubs had faced one another in the playoffs. The only man from either team still around from that earlier meeting was John the Chief Busick, back from 1958. Bruins and Rangers, game one. Tap back to center ice. Brown intercepted by Cashman. Cashman broken up, broken up by Rattel. Brad Park checked by Cashman. Hodge digs. Gets it behind the net. In the far corner, Esposito. Flips it back to Hodge behind the net. He overskates it. Brown loses to Hodge. Puck is loose. Hodge out front. Cashman down. The Bulls take a one and up lead. Espo to Busick. Out to Stanfield. Back to Busick. Out to Esposito. A shot rides over the net. Deflected. McKenzie. Now it's Esposito in the corner. Espo. Right out front, blocked by Jackman. Good save. Espo, no! It's good enough, and Esposito has scored his second goal of the night. Cashman off the boards, intended for Espo, but it's Park across to Brown. Brown to Gilbert, stopped at the line. Here's Cashman, broken up by Arnie Brown. Here's Jack Eagers, booming shot, and he scores. Stop by Chevers or the rebound. Or gets by Stewart. A great move. What a shift. Across to McKenzie. Back to Orr. Shot. Oh. A great shot by Orr that never left the ice and beat. And rice, it's Bobby Orr. Marcotte off for tripping. Orr going through a shot. Oh. For a shorthanded goal for the Bruins. What a blast by Bobby Orr. That's a beat that he pulled four times during the regular season. He's done it here tonight. Here's Rattel to Nevin. Screenshot is deflected wide by Dallas Smith. Behind the net, Rick Smith loses to Bob Nevin. Nevin out to Gilbert. His shot deflected wide by Sanderson. Nevin in the corner. Nevin looks. Shot goes over. Gilbert's shot goes over the Boston net. Park trying to keep it in the zone. Can't do it. Kick the head for Sanderson. Sanders going in. Shot. Oh! Two shot handed goals on one penalty. The Bruins are both. Now it's Dallas Smith. Up to Carlton. Here comes Swoop up the left wing. Fires knocked down by Tim Horton. He's dumped by Carlton. Gets it back. In the corner, Westfall. Out front. Shot by the scores. It's one to nothing Bruins as Jim Lorenz has scored his first Stanley Cup playoff goal. And a pretty pass it was from the corner. Gilbert starts back. Trailing his Rattel and Eagers. Good check by Spear on Gilbert. And that brings the house down. Horton drives. Stopped by 
Cheevers, puck loose in the corner. Again back to Horton, fires again, and it goes in. It's a goal as Jack Eagers, I believe, tipped it by Cheevers, and it's all tied up. Draw goes back to DeMarco, his shot, knocked down by Dallas Smith, that hit him on the right arm. Four goes down, Eagers with the puck, two on one, Chill Bear blocked by Dallas Smith, goal! And the Rangers take the lead for the first time in this series. It's two to one, New York. This is Busick, cross to McKenzie, drop pass, Stanfield, shot, kick save, Sajak. Busick, back to Ori, back in the corner, all the way around to Stanfield. Centering pass, shot, go! Oh! And McKenzie has tied it up. A blistering bullet that Sawchuk still hasn't seen. One minute left in the period is Devin center ice. Good check by Dallas Smith. Stewart with a puck. Shot is blocked by Orr. McKenzie out to Stanfield. Busick on the left wing. Moving through. Shot, go! DeMarco behind the New York net. Esposito shot. Stopped by Sachuk. Now it's DeMarco. DeMarco stopped by Hodge. Going in on Sachuk. Shot. Go! It's 4 to 2 Boston. Ken Hodge drilled that right between his pads. At Ballone fires in on Cheevers. Off the glove to the corner. Or checked by Kachuk. Gets away from Kachuk, and he's got the puck. Using Ballone as a screen into Westfall. Cutting through. Oh! It's five to two. Start for the Bruins in the playoffs of 1970. Eight to two win in Game One, five to three in Game Two, outscoring the Rangers 13 to five. A combined in those two games at the Garden, the two teams took Friday off, and then they went to New York for Games Three and Four on Saturday and Sunday. Highlights next. Kept in by Rattel. Chill Bear fires, kicked out, goal. Rebound shot by Rattel, and it's all tied up. We are about to get a look at what the old-timers talk about when they talk about hockey back in the old days. Saturday night in New York City, third game of the East Division playoffs in the first round. It's the Bruins and the New York Rangers, and the Rangers have decided that they are not terribly fond of the Bruins' glamorous bad boy one, Derek Sanderson. By the way, the other playoff series in the East, the Blackhawks and Detroit, Chicago has taken a two-game lead by winning both games at Chicago Stadium, both of them by a score of 4-2. to two. For the Rangers, this was a game that was close to being an absolutely necessary win. They were already down two games to none. So this was a very important hockey game for the New Yorkers. And did I mention they weren't terribly fond of Derek Sanderson? On the faceoff, shot by Marcotte, goes behind the New York net as Brad Park throws a good check on Marcotte. Puck loose in the corner, Sanderson double teamed, and here we go. Everyone on the ice piles on. Sanderson is on the bottom as the Rangers have ganged up on Derek Sanderson. Marcotte's trying to tear him apart. Sanderson still throwing from both sides. Marcotte's got a hold of Kachuk. Now Kachuk has him backed up against the boards. Sanderson still flailing away. Kachuk was on one side, and I believe it was Brad Park on the other side. They just ganged up on them. And started hitting them one from either side. And Orr will make the final rush of the power play. Four seconds and Curtin back will be out. Fires on Jockerman. Stick save. Rebound Hodge in the corner. Checked by Rattel. Espo trying to dig it out. He's got it. Out front and get by Cashman. Spear drive. Goal! The Bruins lead it one to nothing. Rattel's got Eagers with him. Eagers has the puck in the corner. Checked by Doak. Doak trying to tie up the puck in the corner. It's loose. Now Jack Eagers and Doak go at it. 
Eagers and Doak flailing away in the Boston corner. Ari trying to pull his man off. There's Doak, number 25, trying to get at Jack Eagers, but Shetler pulls Eagers apart, and D'Amico has Doak. Out to Hodge. Hodge. Chill Bear fires. Kicked out. Goal! Rebound shot by Rattel, and it's all tied up. Here comes Kachuk. Kachuk across the line. Fires. Goal! And New York takes the 2 1 lead. Park carries through, still controls. Using John Ashley, the referee, as a screen. Here's Rattel out front, across, shot, goal! Jill Bear has put Rangers ahead, 3 to 1. Carlton loses. Tripping over his stick was Walt Kachuk behind the Boston net. Irvin out front, shot save, another shot, and it goes in, it's 4 1 New York. Stanfield races to keep it in. Taps it to the corner. Busick out to war. He drives. Goal! It's 4-2. And the Bruins have scored on a power play. Orr across to Busick. Back to Orr. Pass was too far in front of him. He would have been walking it alone. McKenzie out to Dallas Smith. Shot. Goal! It's 4-3. On the faceoff. Cross to Orr in the slot. Shot blocked at the buzzer. And it's all over. The Rangers have beaten the Bruins 4-3. Now it's Rattel. In tight. Shot. Goal. Gilbert scores again. It's 2-0 New York. Orr winds up in his own zone. He's at full tilt through center ice. Drops it back for Esposito. Esposito moves in the slot to McKenzie. Shot. Great save by Jackman. Hodges out to McKenzie. Goal! It's 2-1 to one as Esposito converts the pass. And the Bruins are on the scoreboard. Rick Smith starts out. Out to Sandy. Pass goes behind. Here comes Ballone in on Johnston. Shot. Goal! And the Rangers come right back. Here's Fairbin to Kachuk. Broken up by Ari. Here's Sanderson breakaway. Moving in on Jackman. Pulls it around. Takes a deep double team check by Horton to Busick. Busick out to war. Into a screen. He drives. Goal. It's 3 2. Ballone fires to the Boston corner. Behind the net, Jackman leaves it for Orr. Wheels away from Kachuk. He's tackled from behind by Kachuk. Ballone to Kachuk. Shot in the goal. That in capsule form was what hockey was like 25 years ago. And the Rangers were now back in this series, even at two games apiece. Coming back to Boston for Game 5 on Tuesday night, April the 14th. Highlights next. Cashman taken to the boards by Gilbert. Across to Esposito. A shot. Go! While the Bruins and the Rangers were battling it out to see which of the two would move on into the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs back in the spring of 1970, some other fairly significant events were taking place as well, like the Apollo 13 moon landing mission, which blasted off just before Game 3 and headed toward the moon only to lose power and oxygen as the two hockey teams took the ice for Game 5 at Boston Garden on Tuesday night. Plans at the time were for an emergency landing back on Earth three days later on Friday. And while the Bruins and the Rangers were assured of this game and at least one other before a winner was determined, the Chicago Blackhawks had already moved up, sweeping the Detroit Red Wings in four straight. Four to two, four to two, four to two, and son of a gun, four to two. In the West, Pittsburgh had advanced with a four-game sweep over Oakland, and the Blues and the North Stars were tied after four games at two apiece. Now, that Bruins Hockey Club of 1969 and 70 had a large collection of stars, the brightest of the bunch, Orr and Esposito, for reasons clearly evident in Game 5. Here we go again. Horton dives in. 
Dave Ballone, uh, Fairman being held up by Ed Westfall. Horton holding Sanderson. Now Nielsen trying to get at the combatants, being held up by Dallas Smith. They did a very good job uh, killing that penalty. They only had one good shot on Cheevers, a backhand shot. Or across the line, going in, shot, goal! Oh! Drive by Horton and he breaks his stick. Esposito leads Casper going in on Johnson and breakaway. Stop! Or gets it back. Blocked by Gilbert. Ari checks Gilbert. Westfall. Now Park across to Eager. Shot goal. It's all tied up. Here's Sandy cutting in on Jockin. and shot is wide. Just missed the open post as he was tied up and dumped, and the Bruins fans are calling for a penalty. McKenzie to Bobby Orr. Orr out to center ice. Cuts down the middle. Fakes the shot. Dumped as he tried to split between Nevin and Horton. Lead pass to Curtinback. Going in on Cheevers. Shot. Goal. And it's 2-1 to one, New York. Tobacco gets away from Esposito. Slowed down. Hodge taps it back in. Now it's Rattel. And Esposito is going to be going off. He took a shot on the side of the head. And this could be a disastrous penalty for Boston. Blood has been drawn. This could end up being a five-minute high-sticking major. Out to Bobby Orr. His shot hit the post. How close can you come? Orr breaks up the play, but Rattel's got it. Fires. Stopped by Cheevers on the short side. Orr's got it. Starts out. Feeds Esposito. Fires from center ice. Deflected wide by Nielsen. Cashman goes to the corner for it. Cashman. Taken to the boards by Gilbert. Across to Esposito. A shot. Go! It's all tied up! Orr has it at the Boston line. Out to Espo. Walking in. Shot, goal! DeMarco checked by Esposito. Puck is loose. Here comes Kachuk. Kachuk into Balloon. Shot saved. Another shot is wide. Two key moves by Jerry Chevers. DeMarco's shot off the stick hand of Chevers. Hodge trying to clear. Gets over the head of Nielsen. 117 left in regulation time. Orr is back on for Boston. And he's got the puck. Stopped at center ice by Nielsen. Intercepted by Esposito. To Ken Hodge. Glove save, Jackman. One minute straight up in regulation time. Cashman controls. Gets it back in the corner. Esposito and DeMarco go for it. Hodge can't break up the play. Orr's got it. Knocked down by Hodge. Hodge battles Nielsen for it and is tied up there for a face-off for the New York zone with 44 seconds left. Off the face-off. Bruins win the draw and it's all over. They won it 3-2. to two. So 3-2, the final score, 3-2, also the series score at that point as uh, things came down to a sixth game to be played at Madison Square Garden, and that is next. Or behind the net. Now it's Westfall looking for the open man. It's Carlton. Back to Westfall. And goal, it's 4-1 Boston. And Sandy threaded the needle with that. have taken a 4-1 lead. Sixth game of that series between the Bruins and the Rangers from April of 1970. The Bruins with a three games to two lead. Derek Sanderson still in the spotlight as New Yorkers arrived at Madison Square Garden for the game carrying signs reading Sanderson thus had the challenge of trying to become the first non-living player ever to score a goal in the NHL. Eagers races for the loose puck off the boards. Nielsen shot. Stop. Rattel picked out by Chevers. Kept in by Park. Fakes the shot. Gets around Sanderson. Into the circle. Gilbert blocked out front. Goal! And New York is taken. McKenzie.
to Busick. Back to Stanfield. His shot. Tip in. Bouncing puck in front. Esposito tied up by Rick. By Brad Park as Rattel skates it out to Stewart. Dumps it inside the Boston end, right on the stick of Bobby Orr. Orr straight up the middle, breaks. Drop pass, Busick. Across to McKenzie. Shot, goal, it's all tied up. Dallas Smith behind the Boston net. Esposito starts out. Back to Dallas. Dallas flips it to the New York corner. Jackman behind the net, loses. Cashman off the back of the net, and Horton picks it up. Cashman shot at the post, goal! It's two to one, Bruins! Here's Hodge to Orr, he fires. Goal, it's three to one, Boston. And it looked as though Ken Hodge tipped it by Jackman right outside the New York crease. Up the right wing boards for Westfall. Now it's Sanderson. To Bobby Orr. To Carlton. Back to Orr. Orr behind the net. Now it's Westfall looking for the open man. It's Carlton. Back to Westfall. Westfall in the New York corner. Out to Sanderson. Goal! It's 4 to 1 Boston. And Sandy threaded the needle with that shot. And it just bombed by Jackman into the far corner. On the faceoff, Westfall's got it. Across to Carlton, the pass was behind him, and down he goes. Five, the countdown, four, three, saved by Cheevers, two, it's all over, and the Bruins go to the finals against Chicago. The final score, it's the Bruins four, and the Rangers one. You can't see the happy mob scene, there it is, Jerry Cheevers, Gates toward the Boston dressing room. Ken Hodge puts his arms around him. And the congratulations by the New York Rangers who played a tough series. Boston Garden. A lot of hockey has been played there since they opened the doors for the first time back in the early part of the century. None this year, of course, so far. He says, hopefully. Hello again, everybody. I'm Tom Larson. But another of our 70s snapshots as we trace the progress of the 1969-70 Bruins Hockey Club to what turned out to be a Stanley Cup championship. We have advanced to April of 1970, to the second round, the semifinal round of the playoffs, where the Bruins take on the Chicago Blackhawks. In the opening game of that series, it was Sunday, April the 19th, 1970. At that time, the world had been watching the drama in space as American astronauts aboard the spacecraft Apollo 13 were trying to maneuver their way back to Earth. After four perilous days in space, they did, landing in the Pacific, and on this day, April 19th, arriving back on American soil in Honolulu to be met by their family and by President Nixon. In the series in hockey in the West, the St. Louis Blues had taken a one-game lead with a 3-1 to -one win over the Pittsburgh Penguins. At Chicago Stadium, it was uh, one of those brotherly encounters that were so much fun back in the glory days. Phil for the Bruins and with Tony in the net for Chicago. Here's Cashman into the corner, taken under the play. Here's Hodge, a shot, and it bounced off Esposito and up over the glass into the crowd. And Tony Esposito has been injured on that shot from a bad angle. Seemed to hit him on the side of the face. He was wearing a mask, but he's down and has been injured. Cliff Coral across that line. Coral tries to work it in front. He does. A shot at Cheever stopped it. But Peter shot. And that was tipped wide by Rick Smith as Cheevers was out of position. Long pass to Pitt Martin. Here's Martin in across the line. Rolls it in front. Cheevers dove out and grabbed the low spot. And Orr takes over for the Bruins. 22-year-old Bobby Orr, one of the game's great skaters. Look at him fly. Orr taken out of the play by White, centered it, though. Now the Hawks break out. Here's Pappen with Pinder. One man back to pass to Pinder. Pinder the shot. Cheevers made the save. And Busick cleared it to the corner. Now Don Ari, number 26 for Boston, passes it up for Hodge. Hodge to Phil Esposito. Esposito. The shot! He scores! 
Bill Esposito beats young brother Tony on the short side. It hit the post and then bounced in, and the Bruins lead. Now Busick for the Bruins. Back to Stanfield. Back along the boards for Busick. Back to Bobby Orr. Orr fakes the shot to Stanfield. The drive, and that hit a defense foot. Here's Orr at the blue line. Holding. It's a scores! Bill Esposito beats younger brother Tony on a low shot, and the Bruins lead two to nothing on Phil Esposito's second goal of the game. Martin works it out in front of backhand shot, and Bobby Orr fell in front of that. That's two big saves that Orr has made. Puck cleared down into the hot zone. Stanfield couldn't get it. Esposito out of the snap shot at the center. Back comes Busick. Busick for the Bruins. He scores! Firing it right through Tony Esposito's legs as Busick was allowed to walk in across that Chicago blue line, and that makes it three to nothing. Now Dennis Hall to Makita to Dennis Hall who comes to center. Back to Makita. In across the line to Coral. Coral shoots! Boston defense. Number 21, Makita, passes to Magnuson at center. Long slap shot. Seavers kicked that out. Here's Dennis Hall, the rebound. Oh, and Seavers picked out his left leg to stop that one. Puck is along the boards for Coral. He's trying to center it. He does. And Makita tipped it into the goal. Trace and Seavers went to his knees again. From the face off, back to Orr. The drive. Esposito to save. Esposito scores. Bill Esposito got the rebound on Bobby Orr's shot. But Tony Esposito had stopped, and Phil Esposito flipped it in for the hat trick. Bobby Hull, a pass to Papa. He races in after it, centered it. Hit Martin as it can't get a shot. Martin now back to Bobby Hull. The drive, the score! Hawks dubbed Jarrett back for the Chicago Club. Tried to. McKenzie scores! Mackenzie! Campbell number 14 for the Blackhawks. Passes to Stan Nikita. Has caught it, dropped it. Puck is loose in front. Here's Hall at the point. The drive! And Bobby Orr stopped that one. And Orr has now made three big saves. And then... Ken Hodge for Boston. Gets away from Papa. Sets up Sanderson. Sanderson to center. Let's a shot go wide. Esposito cleared it to the corner. Sanderson now to Carlton. Esposito stopped that, but Hodge slapped in the rebound. Phil beating Tony thrice and becoming only the fourth man in hockey history to record three or more hat tricks in a Stanley Cup playoff year. Mackenzie, Hodge, and Busick had the other three goals in that game for the Bruins, who took with the win a 1-0 lead in the series. Game two, the following Tuesday night in Chicago, and that is next. Or gets by Makita. Flips it across for Stanfield. Back to Orr. Shot. Go! The Bruins take a one nothing lead as Orr just walked in on Tony O and scored. The Bruins and the Blackhawks in the semifinal series in the Stanley Cup playoffs in the spring of 1970. Boston with a one-game lead, having won the first game 6-3. In the West, St. Louis had gone up on Pittsburgh two games to none. It is Tuesday, April the 21st. And one day earlier, England's Ron Hill had won the Boston Marathon and broke the course record by close to three and a half minutes. At Chicago Stadium, the Bruins went for a 2-0 lead in that series. Takes a check from Esposito and Moans is sandwiched between Espo and Hodge. Now Moans hits Hodge from behind. And Hodge is trying to get at him. Bobby Hull's trying to hold him up. Doug Moans hit Ken Hodge when his back was turned, and this is what has infuriated Hodge, and he's trying to get at him. Westfall holding Moans off along with linesman Bob Myers. Bobby Hull, Neil Armstrong holding Hodge off. Orr gets by Makita. 
Flips it across for Stanfield. Back to Orr. Shot. No. The Bruins take a one nothing lead as Orr just walked in on Tony O and scored. Now it's Makita. Off the skate of Rick Smith. Dallas Smith can't clear. Magnuson to Coral to Makita. Shot into a screen and just cleared by the loose puck. Going in on the forehand. Shot is wide. Couldn't get too much on it as he was checked tightly by Doug Jarrett. Stanfield keeps it in the zone. Busick gets it back. Shot by Stanfield. He scores. It's two nothing runs. Good pass to Phil Esposito. Ahead to Marcotte. Marcotte shot. Glove save. Esposito leaves it for Magnuson. Marcotte stays right with him. Now Hodge steals. Shot goal. Marcotte scores for Boston. It's 3 nothing, And the Bruins are now taking full advantage of every break as it comes up to it. Pender. Across to Martin. His shot blocked by Rick Smith. Martin to Pender. Stop by and finally scored. The Hawks center ice Magnuson checked from behind and he delayed offside call finally is whistled by Neil Armstrong we've got a face off coming up now here's Magnuson and Carlton right in front of the Bruins bench Magnuson made no bones about it Carlton saw him coming dropped his gloves and was ready for him Carlton getting in several good shots Carlton much the bigger, and I dare say much the stronger of the two. Magnuson very wiry. There's Carlton getting in a couple of uppercuts as Armstrong tries to part them. Bob Myers has got Magnuson, and they all go down. And so, Mr. Carlton and Mr. Magnuson will be cooling it off for the next five minutes, I dare say. Hodge. Pass across to Cashman. To Phil Esposito. He's tied up by Jarrett. Dennis Hall in the Chicago corner. Hit the side of the net. Esposito. Circles. Shoots. Goals! It's four on as Phil Esposito has scored his tenth goal of the series. Sandy fakes the shot. Puts the brakes on. Fades through, blocked by Mackey. Here comes Bobby Hull. Rick Smith trying to break him up. Takes him to the boards hard. They both go down. Tapping across to Bobby Hull. Three seconds. And it's all over. The final score. The Bruins have won two in a row here in Chicago. It's the Bruins four and the Blackhawks one. Bruins four and the Blackhawks one with the series coming back to Boston Garden for games three and four and the Bruins up two games to none. Orr had a goal, Espo won, Marcotte and McKenzie for the Bruins. In developments in other sports on that April the 21st, 1970, the New York Knicks won a ball game in the NBA from the Milwaukee Bucks that put them into the NBA Finals for the first time in 17 years. That was the Knicks club with Willis Reed, Dave DeBusher, Walt Frazier, Bill Bradley, Dick Barnett, and Cassie Russell, among others. Bruins and Blackhawks, third game of this Cup semifinal series from 1970 here on Nesson. Next. Skate straight up. Still going to Bobby Hall. Back in front. Great stick saved by Chambers. That puck was heading for the net. He just squatted it in mid -air. The Bruins were in a great situation back on April the 23rd in 1970. They were already in the Stanley Cup semifinals and had won the first two games of that series against Chicago at Chicago Stadium. And now we're about to play on their home ice at Boston Garden. Two wins away from the Stanley Cup finals. You could argue, and as a matter of fact, it was at the time that this
out of the Western Conference, either St. Louis or Pittsburgh, neither appeared likely to give either the Bruins or the Blackhawks a serious threat. By the way, baseball season was underway, and Tom Seaver had just tied a major league record, one that had been set earlier by lefty Steve Carlton of the Philadelphia Phillies with 19 strikeouts in a ball game. Seaver struck out the last 10 consecutive hitters that he faced in that game. Eventually, of course, a big right-hander from Katy, Texas, would do them both one better in 1986 with 20 at Fenway Park against the Seattle Mariners. Game three now of that series from 1970. By the way, Chicago Hall of Famer Bobby Hull had yet to score a goal in this series. Eddie Westfall of the Bruins had been his shadow, and effectively so, in games one and two. Centering pass, Dennis Hall, a bouncing puck. He's tied up by Busey, gets it back. Blocked by Stanfield. Carl scores, and Chicago takes a one nothing lead. Time of the goal, six minutes, 33 seconds. Two Hawks behind, out front, and it's Wayne Carlton for Boston. Carlton. Centering pass is behind Westfall. Again, Carlton shot, go! And Wayne Carlton has scored for the Bruins, and it's his first playoff goal in a Boston uniform. Right at the post, at the Chicago net, wide out through center ice. Cheevers makes the long save, lays it for Orr. Orr. Stopped by Nestorenko, and Bobby Orr is going to be going off, and perhaps Nestorenko also. Magnuson chased by Phil Esposito as he feeds across now to Jim Pappen. Pappen at the blue line. Stops, feeds across, off the boards for Jarrett. Shot is deflected wide by Rick Smith. Cashman loses behind the net. Out front, Martin gets his shot off and scores. It's 2-1 Chicago. door he fires just misses as McKenzie tried to deflect it into the Chicago net or keeps it in gets by Esposito whites on it can't clear Busick's got it McKenzie in the corner right across the front oh! On the face of Bobby Orr controls in the Boston zone as Nestor couldn't. Bobby Orr legs it back up through center ice. Cuts deep. Goes behind the net. To Esposito. Shot. Go! Bobby Hull gets by Westfall. Pass goes to Dennis Hull. He's got shooting room. Great save by Chevers. And he is down. He leaped high to stop that shot. And it went off his shoulder. Here comes Makita. Across to Magnuson. Shot. Great save by Jerry Chevers. And he ties it up. How he got that glove on that shot, I'll never know. Here comes McKenzie. To Busick. Shot. Great save by Esposito. Otherwise, it was hat trick for Busick. Skates straight up. Still going to Bobby Hall. Back in front. Great stick save by Chevers. That puck was heading for the net. He just swatted it in midair. Or has got it. Down he goes. Makita gets it back. Bouncing puck. Hall swings the stick like a baseball bat. Checks Esposito off the play. Cleared into the corner. This will not be icing. Out front, right on the stick of Martin. Oh! Bill Esposito topped it off the stick of Pitt Magnum right in the open net. Kept in by Bill White. Eight seconds. Stopped by Chevers. Cleared by Orr. And Orr controls as the time runs out. It's all over. The Bruins have won the third consecutive game over Chicago. The final score, the Bruins 5, Chicago 2.
Bruins with a 3-0 lead in the series, and they have shut down Bobby Hull for the third consecutive game. The Golden Jet now without a goal through three games. He had just one assist as the series went to game four and a possible sweep on Sunday, April 26th at Boston Garden. Back with highlight snapshot continued. McKenzie passes to Stanfield, to McKenzie, shooting, he scores! John McKenzie, firing it into the top left-hand corner. Last gasp situation for the Chicago Blackhawks on Sunday, April the 26th of 1970. The Bruins had won the first three games of the series, and this was the possible clincher. In fact, this may have been uh, when that old thing about backs to the wall was uttered for the first of many, many times. Then again, maybe not. And in the series in the West Division, St. Louis and Pittsburgh now was even at 2-2. So a win for the Bruins in this game against Chicago would assure them of some rest time before the series for the Stanley Cup. Makita trying to work it in front. Broken up by Smith who gets it to Busick to Stanfield. Ahead of center to McKenzie. John McKenzie. Goes in and Esposito stopped that. Rebound came out. Stanfield couldn't get it. And Magnuson clears it around in the boards. Now McKenzie. Tied up by Magnuson. Here's Johnny Busick along the board. Gets it to McKenzie. Shooting! Esposito stops that one as he fell to his knees. The Hawks. Here's Dennis Hall, number 10. Shot wide. Bounced it right out in front as it took a crazy hop off the board. As Rick Smith feeds it to Cashman. Ahead to Phil Esposito. Esposito the shot! Oh, and brother Tony kicked that one out. It centered out again. Hard for Phil Esposito swings around a backhand shot just went wide. Now Dennis Hall tries to tie up there. Pass to McKenzie out at center to Busick. Busick in across the line. A shot, Esposito, a great save. Bobby Hall to center. In across the line for Cliff Coral. Coral centered it and Cheevers just got his pad on that. Mark Cott along the board. Bobby Hall over to jam it away from him. It goes to Phil Esposito. Back to Orr. Orr couldn't get away from Coral. Orr has it again. Shooting it out at center and that's Don Marcotte, the Bruin rookie. 45 seconds left in the Boston Pedaling. Moans into the corner. Centered it. Here's Hall with shot. Keevers made the save on Hall and then dove out to grab the Bobby Hall had a great chance but was thwarted by Jerry Cheever. Phil Esposito with Busick and McKenzie up front. Stanfield and Orr, the point man on the Boston power play. Stanfield at center, a long shot. McKenzie racing in after it. Centered it and... Busick, he scores! Tony Esposito, since he has stopped it, the red light is on. That puck just slid in across the goal line. Esposito felt he had stopped it. The red light went on. Here is another look at it. Now McKenzie centers it. Here's Busick's first shot. Esposito stops that. The rebound. Busick tries to flip it in. There it is, and you see it just across the goal line. Now it's Magnus at Fort Chicago. Slides the puck on into the corner. Rick Smith is back to get it number 10. Makita's after him, now Dennis Hull to Makita in the corner. Devers out of the net to beat Makita to the puck. Shot it on the boards, Busick taken out of the play by Makita. Here's Coral. Coral centered it right across the goal now. Magnuson the drive, he scores! Keith Magnuson gets his first Stanley Cup goal and he races into the goal trace to get the puck. And the Bruins have the man advantage. They lead the hockey game 2-1 to one as Bobby Orr goes back to his own blue line. The wind up on this power play ahead to Phil Esposito. He's in the clear. The shot. Caught it with his right hand as we saw brother against brother. And Tony outgassed the older guy, Phil, with a great save. Now Sanderson in across the line. The slap shot high off the glass. Tony Esposito cleared it over on the boards to Pinder. Pinder. Back by Sanderson. Sanderson the shot. Tony Esposito made the save and then... He and Bill White cover up on the loose box. The Hawks, Garrett to Makita. Makita fakes the shot, centered it. Garrett has it, centered it back out in front. It comes to Makita. Makita into the corner for Coral. Cliff Coral, across the goal, Malthus, and he scores! Dennis 
Cole set up beautifully. It's a two-on-one break for Boston. Stanfield to McKenzie. Get on ball. He's just, oh! And it was just cleared off to the side of the net and tied as Esposito was out of position. Now Stanfield, the music, and he shot it wide. McKenzie along the boards. He had that great chance earlier. Back on the point to Ari. Ari into the corner to Busick. Busick in front to Sandfield, the shot. And Esposito stopped that. Now Bobby Orr holding it in to John McKenzie. To Stanfield, the drive, Esposito. Made the save and Holmes comes up at the rebound. Orr still with the puck. Checked from behind and back comes Dennis Hall with Chico Mackey trailing. Dennis Hall on the right wing. Goes in on goal, he trips, he scores! Dennis Hall! Tried to clear it out. Does. Stanfield racing after it. Gets the puck. One man back. Stanfield is shot. Stanfield. A booming clock shot that just caught the inside of the post. Moves it ahead to Bobby Hull on the left wing at center. Hull. Couldn't get a shot away at Mark Kostek and then knocked Hull down. Now Dennis Hull out to Magnuson. Magnuson the drive. Cheever's the save. And the rebound. To, to Campbell. He scores. Brian Campbell got the rebound. The Bruins change on the move. Here's Magnuson. Lost the puck to Phil Esposito. One man back. The shot. Oh, and he shot it wide. His brother Tony came out. Another drive by Hodge goes wide. Now Ari into the corner for Cashman. Behind the net to Hodge. He tries to center it. Hodge again rolled it in front. Puck cleared back in behind the net. It's loose again in front. A pile up. Puck is still loose. Still loose and play is finally called as Cashman in across that line. Working it in front. Gets turned around into the corner to Phil Esposito. The shot. Kenny Hodge deflecting in. Phil Esposito centering pass. Now Moan. Checked by Busick, who centered it, and Makita cleared it, but not out. McKenzie passes to Stanfield. To McKenzie. Tony, he scores! John McKenzie firing it into the top left-hand corner. And the Bruins go ahead 5-4 to four on the whole Boston 10 50s to congratulate McKenzie. Here's why. Right over the left shoulder of Tony Esposito. Buck has dropped Makita. There's a shot by Westfall, a stop, the game is over. There's Bill Esposito going right over to congratulate Brother Tony as the game race out onto the ice to congratulate their goaltender, Jerry Cheevers, and each other. Arrived at that point in the 1969-70 hockey season when the Stanley Cup championship would be decided. Hello again, everybody. I'm Tom Larson. As we continue to chronicle that year from what we now refer to as the glory days. It was the start of a stretch of four, maybe five years in which the people who played hockey for the Boston Bruins were very close to godlike in the city. That's probably kind of overstating things, but not by very much. We are talking about a period of about 25 years here. So you'd have to be at least 30 or so to have any clear recollection of how things were. I can remember having just moved here from the Midwest and being dropped into the middle of all of it, being stunned to find that there was nobody who had any interest in talking about the Celtics and basketball. There was just nobody who cared. This town, city of Boston, was in October of 1969, primed and ready for a hockey season that people already sensed it was going to be something very special. And as it turned out, they were right. In early May, the Bruins had won their way into the championship round with wins first over the Rangers and then the Blackhawks. The East Division of the National Hockey League at the time was comprised of the original six clubs in the league and the West Division was made up of the various expansion clubs that had recently been added to double the size of the league. So in the minds of about everybody, whichever team won the playoff in the East would be the Stanley Cup champs. But they did have to make it official against the representative from the West, who turned out to be the St. Louis Blues, who had beaten Minnesota in six games and then Pittsburgh in six to get there. Now, 
Just to indicate that not a whole lot changes with the passage of time, as the Bruins and the Blues got ready for the first game of that series in St. Louis, the sports pages were occupied by stories about the possibility that Major League Baseball could be facing a work stoppage unless the players and the owners could come to an agreement on general contract terms. That from May of 1970. Well, the Bruins won the first game 6-1, to one, but it wasn't as easy as the score might indicate. It was 1-1 until midway through the second period and then 2-1 going into the third. At that point, the Bruins put it away on a Wayne Carlton goal at 4:59, one by the Chief just 32 seconds later, two more in the final three minutes, one by Sanderson, the other by Esposito. Now, game two was also in St. Louis, and we will be back with some of the highlights of that one after this. Music's got it starting out to McKenzie. Back to Busick on the give and go. He's controlling. Cuts through straight down the middle. Shot. Goal at 6-2 Boston. And for Johnny Busick, his ninth playoff goal, and what a pretty goal it was. The game was pushed into the background in an historic sense because the headlines that May 5th were of the shooting the day before at Kent State University in Ohio of four Vietnam War protesters by National Guard troops. Before that game in St. Louis, Jimmy Roberts of the Blues was mobbed by reporters because his job was going to be to shadow Bruin defenseman Bobby Orr. When he had done it in game one, it was the first time in hockey history that anyone had been assigned to shadow a defenseman. Game two highlights. Don Earl with the calls. Esposito bouncing puck in the corner. McKenzie out to Busick. Busick trying to get around Berenson. Loses the puck. Cleared the center ice. Kept in by Stanfield. Moving through. Drive. Off the glove hand of Wakeley. McKenzie the rebound. Centering pass. Blocked by Berenson. That's blocked. Shot is blocked. Gets it back. Another shot is blocked. Esposito gets it back again. Feeds Stanfield. He drives. And Wakeley this time very smartly ties it up. The Blues have got a lot of goaltenders out there tonight, Don. Darrenson against Esposito on the draw. Puck is loose. Darrenson clears for the Blues. Bobby Orr starts out slowly, cuts right in front of Jerry Cheevers, feeds Esposito at center ice. Trying to go around Bob Plager in front, blocked by Wakeley, out to Stanfield, goal! It's one and a thing, the Bruins lead on a power play goal by Freddie Stanfield, and a pretty goal it was. For Stanfield, play. that's his fourth goal. You'll see it again right here. There's Esposito. Plager, but be blocked at the post by Wakeley with help from Talbot. There's Wakeley tying it up there, but not completely. There's the puck getting by Berenson out to Stanfield. There's the shot. There's the goal. It's one to nothing, Boston. Time of the goal, eight minutes, ten seconds. Wheels away from McDonald and away from Goyette. Feeds back to Ari in the Boston zone. And Ari clears the length of the ice. Bobby Orr on his assist to Fred Stanfield on the Boston goal has set a new playoff record for most points by a defenseman. And that's just part of the story. Here comes St. Marseille. Blocked by Marcotte in the circle. Across. Shot is one. Picked up Bill Boyette. Marcotte, a good check on St. Marseille. Keenan to St. Marseille. Blocked by Ari. Roberts blocked by Ari. Two key blocks by Don Ari, and the puck is clear to the corner by Marcotte, the length of the ice. But Marcotte's doing a great job out there in this penalty. Mackenzie set to come out. The Bruins will be back at full strength and now are. Here's Rick Smith with Westfall. His shot stopped by Wakeley. Westfall, a rebound, scores! 
It's two to nothing, Boston. Time of the goal comes at 12 minutes, at 13 minutes and 38 seconds. There is determination plus. Let's look at it again. There's Rick. Gets it by both defensemen, blocked by Wakeley, but he didn't tie it up. There's Westfall. Controlling the puck, just wheeling around on the forehand. There's the shot by Picard, who actually took his own goaltender right out of the play. Harry Sinden attempting in vain to get the attention of referee Bill Friday. The whole Boston bench area erupted when the penalty was called. Yeah. As we've mentioned before, that's a penalty which we've seen all too often this year. They seem to be calling it more in the last year or so than they ever have done before. Uh, I can't understand it myself because the fellow wasn't in the play at all, so it didn't make too much difference. And he's up, uh, he's up over at the bench, but evidently he saw it differently. That's Bill Lazook, number 21, serving the bench minor for the Bruins. Lazook carried uh, by Hershey the better part of this season, called up for participation if needed in Stanley Cup play for Boston. St. Marseille feeds to Ab McDonald. He's got Goyette with him. One minute to go in the period. Goyette. Blocked by Orr. Bobby gets by two of the Blues. Three of them. Out through center ice. Full team ahead. Cross the line. Westfall drives. Scores! It's 3 nothing. A short-handed goal by Eddie Westfall. His second of the game. His third of the 1970 playoffs. He picked that short side and threaded the needle by Wakeley. It's 3 nothing Bruins. He's, he certainly did, Don, and looks as if Westfall can do something more than uh, keep the other guy from scoring. Look at it again on replay. Tremendous strides by Bobby Orr. Look at this pass to Westfall. Right on the stick. The off-wing pass, but Westfall beat Wakeley to the short side, and it's 3 nothing Boston. Face off to Jerry's left. Bruins control it. Dallas Smith against the fourth checking of St. Marseille. Stanfield flips it ahead for Music. Back to Stanfield. Bouncing puck. Arbor taps it back to the Boston zone. Doak is on it. Marcotte broken up at the line by Forta. Chris back to Forta. Now it's Marcotte broken up by Chris. Doak to Stanfield. Stopped at the line by Forta. Intercepted by Marcotte. Marcotte fires to the Blues corner. The Blues fans calling for an offside call. Intercepted Stanfield. Debusic right across in front. Marcotte digs for it. To Orr. Drive. Deflected wide. Marcotte in the corner. To Stanfield. Back to the Chief. Broken up by Fabron. Off the stick of Bobby Orr to the Boston zone. Slick passing by the Bruins. Fails to produce any score. Here's Westfall. Taps it around Plager. And Westfall goes down and he's hurt. He hit his head against the boys as he went down. And he is hurt. I think he hit his head, Don. Here comes trainer Dan Caddy off the Boston bench. A St. Louis penalty coming up to Bob Plager. <laughs> On the power play. McKenzie trying to feed back to Carlton. The shot is, the pass is blocked by Berenson. Orr leaves it for Esposito. Pass goes to McKenzie. Behind Carlton, but Espo's trailing the play and he's got it. Esposito around Berenson. Sanderson out front. Goal! It's 4 nothing Boston. A great bit of timing by Sanderson and Esposito. 
and the Bruins capitalize on another power play goal. Tony, we see Ed Westfall still on the Boston bench, so apparently he's okay and will be held in reserve if needed. This is Dallas Smith. 57 seconds left to Sanderson's penalty. Players back to center ice for Orr across to Marcotte. Off the stick of Dallas Smith to the Blues corner. Scotty Bowman going with Goyette, Berenson, Ab McDonald up front, along with Larry Keenan and Jim Robert. This is Keenan. Swept off his stick by Orr, Marcotte spins Keenan into the boards. Far corner, Dallas Smith. Kept in by Roberts, broken up by Stanfield. McDonald shot blocked by Orr. Swept off McDonald's stick by Marcotte. Here's Berenson. He drives. Stopped by Cheevers right in the Boston crease. It looked as though for a moment that Jerry was almost losing his grasp on the puck and spun over backwards to prevent the puck from slipping into the net. Esposito against Terry Crisp in the Boston zone. Kept in by Picard. Eight seconds left to Sanderson's penalty. Shot goal! talking how many faceoffs Derek Sanderson has won. He won the opening faceoff to start the period. Let's see how he does right here. Let's watch him. He wins it again. Dr Rick Smith's shot is wide to the far side. Rebound Dallas Smith. Sanderson's got it. Bouncing puck. And now it's Jimmy Roberts. Clearing to center ice. Rick Smith's got it as both teams are back at full strength. Off the skate of St. Marseille. Sanderson flips it in on Wakely. Wide of the St. Louis net. Talbot. Flips it ahead for Goyette. Hops over his stick. Now it's Talbot. Almost broken up by Sanderson. Carlton's got it. Shot is wide. Shot by Dallas Smith is tied up. Sanderson shot. And the light goes on. It's 5-1 Boston. And for Sanderson, his second of the night. Here it is again on instant replay. Apparently, Wakely thought he had the puck tied up, but it slipped loose. You'll see it. There's Dallas Smith across to there's Sanderson just tapping it loose away from Wakely. The upraised stick, and Sanderson has scored his fifth playoff goal. It's 5-1 Boston. Stanfield on the draw. Gets it to the corner for Don Ory. Throwing's back at full strength as Orr is on. He's got the puck. Lays it for McKenzie. He's on the gallop, trailing his Orr. Shot off the post. And Talbot gets the rebound. Blocked by Stanfield. Gets by McKenzie all the way back to the Boston line. Don Ory has it. Feeds back to Bobby Orr in the corner. Or sweeps it by Terry Crisp. Wheels away from Boudria. Still controlling. Putting on a show for the Blues fans here in St. Louis. Stanfield. Checked by Crisp. Ahead to McKenzie. He and Busick crisscross. Behind the net, it's Gary Sabrin. Flips it back for Talbot. Now it's Jim Roberts. Boudria across to Sabrin. Talbot flips it into the Boston zone behind the net. It's Bobby Orr to Busick as they crisscross. Busick's got it starting out to McKenzie. Back to Busick on the give and go. He's controlling. Cuts through straight down the middle. Shot. Goal at 6 2 Boston. And for Johnny Busick, his ninth playoff goal. And what a pretty goal it was. Don, that's what you call uh, persistence. 
Yeah, there it is on replay. There's Busick cutting straight down the middle. On the backhand, getting it by the diving Wakely, and it's 6-2 Bruins. There was a story in the local media just prior to the series that had predicted a Boston sweep of the St. Louis Blues. It said that the Blues looked like a, quote, good minor league team. And now with the win in game two, the Bruins were halfway there, and they had outscored the St. Louis club 12 to three in the first two games. The series moves to Boston for games three and four. We will see more of the highlights after this. Out to Esposito, shot stop, Cashman's got it. Fires, another great save, a shot, oh! Cashman has scored a second goal of the night. And so, the predicted Boston sweep of the St. Louis Hockey Club in the Stanley Cup Series was halfway done. Boston had taken game one six to one, although it took a third period outburst of four goals to establish that five goal margin. And in the second game, the Bruins did in fact dominate, running out a 4-0 lead before the Blues got their first goal, and that didn't come until the second period. And now the series was in Boston for the first time, and the Blues, who had used Jacques Plante and Ernie Wakely in goal in the first two games, now came back with Glenn Hall. Boston Garden, game three. Don Earls calls. That's Don Ari. He's in the box for boarding at 5-11. And keep in mind, if you will, the Blues finished second only to the Boston Bruins in most power play goals during the regular season. Both the Bruins and the Blues broke the old record for regular season power play goals. Ecclestone hurries back. Now it's Jimmy Roberts intercepting in front of his own net. Ecclestone across to Sabra. Now it's St. Marseille getting around Orr. Right across in front is right off the stick of Dallas Smith, I believe. He was trying to clear and St. Louis gets on the scoreboard first in this First of two games here at Boston Garden Ice. Time of the power play goal comes at five minutes and 32 seconds. So it's Roberts for hooking, Berenson and Cashman for roughing, all three of them coming at 11.44. Bruins going with Esposito and Busick as their, uh, and Stanfield, along with Bobby Orr. The three skaters for the Blues Noel Picard, Bob Plager. And the lone forward is Tim Ecclestone. This is Esposito. Back to Stanfield. Out to Orr. Back to Stanfield. Moving through, drives, hit the post! And came right out again. Orr to Busick. Cross for Stanfield, get by him! Stanfield keeps it in. Esposito controls, and it's cleared by Picard. Almost had a tie hockey game on that shot by Stanfield. Orr gets by one man. Crisp. Controlling. Bobby takes it behind the net. Out to Busick. To Stanfield. Takes the shot. Back to the Chief. Back to Stanfield. Cross to Orr. Orr drives. Busick, shot, picked out by Hall, and cleared by Terry Chris. But Hall is pretty sharp in there. I can see why they saved him for tonight's game. He's been, uh, he's made some great stops there so far. It was a big surprise that they didn't start him Tuesday night in St. Louis. Instead, they went with Ernie Wakeley, who's young, 29, shot by Orr's, glove save, Hall. Clears it by Busick, almost on a stick. Stanfield. Into Esposito, shot saved. Busick scores, it's all tied up. And Busick continues to be red hot in this Stanley Cup final for the Chiefs, his 10th playoff goal of the year. Gets by Hall in the corner, McKenzie. Stanfield back to McKenzie. Busick trying to dig it out, but Talbot flips it around the boards for St. Marseille. Or dumped by Ecclestone, and the puck is back in the corner. Picard. Starts back for the Blues. Pass was way behind Sabrin. Ari off the stick of Busick. Cuts by Picard, but he's broken up by Talbot. 
Talbot's been in the National Hockey League 16 years. He's been in the Stanley Cup Finals 12 of those 16. McKenzie, shot, goal! And it's 2-1 Boston. Now Cashman tips it ahead for Esposito, but he can't control it. Billy Plager back to the Boston zone where it's Orr. Cross to Ori. Esposito, center ice. Jump by Jimmy Roberts. Here's Cashman. Shot. Go! It's three to one. And for Wayne Cashman, his fourth goal of the year. Here Back to Ori. Stopped at the line by Talbot. Blocked by Esposito, but back to help out is Red Berenson. Berenson stopped at the line by Hodge and then Ori. Here's Esposito trying to squeeze along the boards. He's tied up by Talbot. Espo's got it. Throws it across in front. Ori drives. Hit the post. That's the second time in this series that Ori has hit a post. And both of them would have beaten Hall. This is Picard out to Talbot. Across for Gray on his off wing. Now it's Cashman starting back. Pulls a feint. Back to Hodge. Back to Cashman. Out to Esposito. Shot stop. Cashman's got it. Fires, another great save, a shot, go! Oh! Jasper has scored his second goal of the night. And game four would be three days later at the Garden. It's probably struck you as it has me sitting here in the locker room at the Garden that this is where all those great stars laced them up for that championship game. But before that, there were also a bunch of awards that were passed out on Saturday, May the 9th, before the fourth game on Sunday. This 70s snapshot will continue after this. And Busick skates around with the cup to the roar of the crowd. Johnny Busick, the great veteran left winger, has that trophy high in the air. And the crowd loving every moment. And close to a craziness for hockey that had been going on at this time in Boston for several months now, in 1969 and 1970. It was very difficult for anyone who played for the Bruins to go anywhere without being recognized and mobbed. In fact, it was more than difficult. And if you can remember what it was like in the Celtic years with Larry, Kevin, and the Chief, well, that may have been in the ballpark with what the Bruins were in the early 70s, but it just wasn't quite the same. On Saturday, May the 9th, the National Hockey League held a do, if you will, to honor the season's best. And mostly one guy wore a path in the carpet, walking from his seat to accept a trophy, back to his seat, up to accept another trophy, and that, of course, was Bobby Orr. Hart Trophy as the league's MVP, Norris Trophy as the best defenseman, the Art Ross Trophy as the league's leading scorer. And the next day, on Sunday, the St. Louis Blues went out to try to force the series to a fifth game. Boston had already won the first three games by a total score of 16 to 4. The Blues made sure that the fourth one would not come easily. Goaltenders again, Glenn Hall for St. Louis, Jerry Cheevers for Boston. And it took John Busick's goal at 13.28 of the third period to tie the game and send it to overtime. Play underway, the first team to score wins the game. Here's Picard, out to Tim Ecclestone. Back to his own line to Jean-Guy Talbot. Talbot out to Keenan, he missed it, and Bobby Orr flipped it out at center to Sanderson. Sanderson shooting it into the St. Louis zone. Racing in is Carlton for the Bruins. Centered it up close in front, and Talbot cleared it. Here's Don Ori a shot. That's blocked by Talbot. Now Sanderson a drive, and that one whistled wide. Ori for the Bruins, tied up by Ecclestone and Berenson. Westfall rolled it in front. Sanderson tried a shot that was wide, and Keenan cleared it, but not out. Bobby Orr, behind the net to Sanderson, to Orr! Bobby Orr scores in the Boston Bruins! The Bruins will stand the cup! Orr, looking at it as a third goal, and look at the ball team by the Bruins, as Bobby Orr scores! Seconds of overtime, and the Bruins 
win the Stanley Cup. Here's a look at it again. It was centered and Orr flipped it in, in behind Glenn Hall on Sanderson's pass. Another look. In behind the net to Sanderson, out in front to Orr, and Bobby Orr made no mistake in beating Glenn Hall. And the Bruins win the Stanley Cup. And now we have the St. Louis Blues and the Boston Bruins congratulating each other. There's Bobby Orr, the man that scored the winning goal. The roar from the crowd. Just listen to them. The roar is deafening here in Boston as they bring the Stanley Cup out onto the ice. And Busick skates around with the cup to the roar of the crowd. Johnny Busick, the great veteran left winger, has that trophy high in the air. And the crowd loving every moment of it. And there they go, the Boston Bruins skating off with the Stanley Cup. Johnny Busick having it high over his head. What a moment for the Bruins and their fans. The time of the goal, 40 seconds of sudden death overtime. Bobby Orr set up by Sanderson to win the game four to three for Boston and to win the series four games to nothing. And we should add a word or two about the St. Louis Blues, Bill. They put on a valiant effort here today and uh, you and Gordy Howard talking about their pride. They have certainly exhibited the kind of play, the kind of spirit that is a championship type of spirit. Okay, this is Dan Kelly now for Bill Mazur saying goodbye from the Garden in Boston. The time on the Boston Garden clock was 40 seconds of overtime. It was 3.19 p.m. that Sunday afternoon in Boston. The Bruins had won the Stanley Cup for the first time in 29 years. The goal that Orr scored in overtime was caught by sports photographer Ray Lucier in one of the great sports photos of all time. Orr flying through the air, arms outstretched. He was smiling. Puck in the net behind Hall. It was a masterpiece. Phil Esposito set what was at the time a record for the playoffs with 27 points and with 13 goals. Bobby Orr set comparable records for defensemen with 20 points and 9 goals. Two years later, the Bruins would win themselves another Stanley Cup, of course, but this one was special because it had been so long since the last one. We will go into the locker room. This one, 25 years ago, when 70's Snapshot continues. I guess everybody can tell what's going on in here, and uh, I tell you, it's been a long, long time coming for me. And, uh, I don't know what else to say, but... The Boston Bruins, Stanley Cup champions, finishing with a sweep over the West Division representatives from St. Louis. In fact, the Bruins set a record by winning their last 10 games in the postseason. They had been tied with the Rangers at two games apiece, and then won games five and six. And they rolled over the Blackhawks in four straight, outscoring them 20 to 10, and then another four in a row against the Blues, leaving absolutely no doubt as to the best team in the National Hockey League for the 1969-70 season. And Don Earl, then the TV voice of the Bruins, joined the champs here in this very locker room. Just as soon as possible, we'll be moving our camera inside. We're jam-packed with people right outside this dressing room. As you can see, it's pandemonium here in the Bruins dressing room. Freddie, could you step... Oh, you still got your skates on if you can. Fred Stanfield. This has got to be the day of your lifetime. Oh, beautiful, Don. Just great. No kidding. Everybody feels fantastic. Your line has played a fantastic series right from the New York series straight through. Well, we started off a little slow today, but we came through. Big Chief got the tying goal there, and we knew we had it after that. We had the momentum going, and just everybody worked so damn hard. The end came very explosively. You're not kidding. Well, that was great. That's the best feeling I've had in my life. You've had a great year, Freddie, and congratulations Thank to you the very entire much, club. We're all happy. Fred Stanfield, probably the most underrated player on this year's Boston Bruins team. 
the guy. Eddie Westfall. Eddie Westfall. Come on up here. Eddie, can you make it? It was a long climb up for the club, a short climb up to join us on our TV 38 cameras. Well done. <laughs> I guess everybody can tell what's going on in here. And uh, I tell you, it's been a long, long time coming for me. And uh, I don't know what else to say, but what a hell of a hockey team. And we never quit. The St. Louis team deserves a great deal of credit. They hung tight they, today. They, they played a tremendous hockey game today and kind of got us off balance there for a while. But I didn't think that, you know, that they could last that long. So I was real happy with the outcome, and of course, we're having a hell of a time now. Congratulations, Eddie, a, a superb series. Thank you very much, Don. We can get a few of the other fellas up here. Hey, Eddie Johnston. Congratulations. Terrific. Eddie. Oh, this is great too from Prince of my life. When you're 10 years old, you want to be on a winner and you got no place to go. You, you played some key games when Jerry was hurt down the stretch. You sat on the bench during the playoffs, but your presence was felt. Oh, I was beautiful. Jerry was just great, great, super. God, I'm just so happy to be on a winner. I never played so long. With a great bunch of guys. And not a greater guy could have scored a goal. You've oh. been with the Bruins during their bad years. This has got to be... This is the year now, boy. We're going to be here for a long time. I just hope I can stay with the club for a few more years and win a few more of these things. Well, we've this got the great. horses to do it. Oh, we got them. We got them all, baby. Congratulations. Thank you, Donnie. Oh, beautiful. Where's Bobby? Come on, Swope. Come on up here. All right. Watch the court. Oh, boy. Swope, what can you say? All I can say is it's a great feeling to see Bobby Orr score, score that goal because he's played such a great series and uh, they've really watched him so close and uh, it was no more befitting. It was the happiest thing I think I've ever seen. It was just, it was just great to be a Stanley Cup winner and on a Stanley Cup winner when he scores it, it's even that much greater. You uh, scored some key goals in this series. You came on strong as I'm sure you knew you could once you had the confidence. Yeah, I, th I think uh, the credit goes to the whole line. Sandy... Uh, played well, and Eddie Westfall was playing well, and we were primarily a checking line against Chicago. In this series, uh, the first couple of games, we got some big goals, and uh, again, the day our line was on for the, the most important one, and that was the winner, and uh, it was just the greatest thrill in the world to win in overtime. Congratulations, Wayne. Thank you very much, Don. As you can see, the champagne is flowing, and what better time for it to flow? Johnny McKenzie won a hell of a series. Oh, we had a great year done all the way, and great. Uh, this maybe it's a dynasty. Eh? Oh, let's hope so. We got uh, all the guys played so well together. We were uh, in a little trouble until the big Bobby came through for us, and Derek made a hell of a play to him, and uh, we're champions. The one thing that was very noticeable to us all through the playoffs, and for that matter, all through the season. When Bobby or Phil were, were held up, your line picked up the slack. When your line was held up, the other lines would pick up the slack. And this is the true hallmark of a championship That's team. Right. That's right, because uh, like you say, Don, no, no one line won everything. Uh, we, we played together as a real hockey team, and we certainly uh, have proven we're a hell of a club. And uh, let's hope it stays uh, for years to years to come. Congratulations, Thank Johnny. You. Let's have a little celebration. Beautiful. Hey, Johnny. Better to drink than to drown in, but oh my be God. that as it may. Cash, what are your thoughts at this moment? I can't think, Don. I just can't. I don't believe it till now. What are your thoughts at this moment? Three. Wesley, congratulations. Oh, Don, it's wonderful. It's wonderful for the players. Wonderful for everybody. Everybody that waited 20 years, this is the greatest moment of my life. The best. I'd like to congratulate the St. Louis Blues for a team that was down 3 nothing today. They put on one of the fantastic shows everything put on in hockey. They pressed you to the very limit. They were there. That was an, either one's game, but we had the big number four. Quite a guy. The, great guy. Greatest, the greatest guy in hockey got the greatest goal. Cash, you had a fine year yourself. All you were looking for was that chance to play, and you got it. Well, I just try to do my job. I hope I help the team out some. Congratulations. This is a reward, Don. Thank you very much. We'll see you around next year. Up to Cashman. Cashman. Drive. Oh! And the Bruins go ahead six to one. John, I think we've got a good line here. Jerry, you did it all for us in the Nets. Hmm? 
Oh, it's, it's great playing a team like this. You know, uh, you keep waiting for your team to score, you know this team's going to score at any time, which we've proven all throughout the year. It's really great to play on a team like this, believe me. Jerry, uh, that goal that uh, came at 40 seconds of sudden death overtime must have really lifted you at the other end. Oh, I was elated. I, I, go, Billy. I, I was elated. I was sure glad, glad for it, I'll tell you. Couldn't be a greater guy to get in Bob. He's sure a great hockey player. This club set all sorts of playoff records, and you set one yourself, and uh, this was the name of the series. Only one thing I said, we won the Stanley Cup. I'm quite proud of that. 29 me. long years, they finally came back. Yes, sir. It's really a thrill. Congratulations, Thank you, Jerry. Don. We got a few more around here. There he is. Why is he? How are you? Well, we did it, Don. We finally came through, big well, guy. you predicted it up in London, Ontario. What's that? You got something in your eyes? Yeah, a little champagne. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, we, we unbelievable how the guys really played. Uh, Don, it's, it's just a fantastic feeling. You know... Uh, Words cannot express how everybody feels in the room. It's jubilation all the way through, and I'll tell you, it goes all the way down from the owners to the management to, to the guys on the team, the coach, and everything. There's not enough can be said about all of us. We're all, a, you know, all a bunch of great guys right now. You know, it's all—it's almost like a mainspring that has finally unwound, and everyone's just letting loose. This is this is quite true. Everybody's, they're all their emotions are coming out right now, as you can tell. It's just a feeling that all year long, you know, like you said, the spring was the spring was sprung, and and now it's over. And like you say, jubilation throughout, and we're the happiest people here. But I'll tell you, without those there people outside. It wouldn't be a hockey game, and we owe it all to them because they're great fans, and they supported us all year. And, you know, they're These just These fans wonderful. supported this club through 29 long years without a cup, and I'll they want to be around to enjoy this one. I'll tell you what. The appreciation that we have here in this room extends out to all of them, all of them watching on TV and everything. And like I said before, they're just wonderful, and they're great. When I wasn't here and I came to this town, they're just tremendous, the fans. Just unbelievable, and as you have said, they, they deserve everything they get, and we're all part of this cup, and they de rightly deserve to have their name on it, but I doubt if they'll get it. Well, Boston Bruins is their name, and that will be on it. Congratulations. Thank you, Peter. Don. Back here at the Bruins dressing room, two oars. Bobby and his dad, Doug. Congratulations, Bobby, on a tremendous victory. Thanks, Don. It's, uh, uh, it's so great. I don't, I don't want to say this team, unbelievable. The guys that are hurt, they're out yelling for us between periods. They're in the stands. They're fighting for us. The guys that are playing goaltending, you know, we put everything together. Just a great bunch of guys. Great. Doug, how do you feel about it? This is the happiest day of my life. <laughs> I spent... I spent since, go ahead. Ever since I... Uh, Accumulated, Bobby. I'm waiting for this. I spent the last five minutes of the uh, third period in the overtime down here with you, Doug, and you were just pacing back. I was, not, I was not watching the game, but I was there. But I want to tell you one thing. My wife is at home, and she is crying right now. Is she I just phoned her. Now? Uh, CBC, I don't know if they're picking it up, but if they are, this is the happiest day of my life. This is the happiest day of my life. I, I, I couldn't wish for anything else. Hey, hey, no, no, hold up now, eh? What are you going to say? <laughs> Not when I made you, please. <laughs> Congratulations, Thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Thank you, Thank you very much. Mr. Adams. This is the day. Mr. Adams. This is the day. Mr. Adams. This has got to be the third happiest day of your life. Two more cups before that. Now this. Oh, this is the most. This is the most. This is the most. Absolutely. This is this is beautiful. It's a great hockey team, and they did it the hard way. The camera's over here, Mr. Adams. I'm sure they'd like to see you. Mr. Adams, can I say something? Yes, please do. Five years ago, when you come looking for Bobby Orr, I never thought he'd ever make it like this. You didn't. And this is the happiest day of my life. You're a hell of a father. I was Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mr. Adams, you've been beating the bushes looking for young hockey talent. This has got to give you a great deal of satisfaction. Oh, uh, it's a great hockey team. I mean, it was a great win for everybody. It had to be a team do. And they believed in themselves. Everybody was magnificent. But they weren't going to get licked. We knew they weren't. It was just, just a question of when. Congratulations, Mr. Adams. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you, Dad. My pleasure. Thank you. Oh, you know I've never met. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The only team we don't even know. <laughs> I know your son going well. <laughs> Weston Jr. and Doug, thanks very much. Espo. Espo. Come on over here. Phil Esposito. I'll drink to that. 
<laughs> Phil, do you recall what you said to me in London, Ontario back in 1967? Three years ago, man. I told you, three years to win this cup. I figured first place, too, but uh, we didn't get that, but we got the cup, and that's all that matters. I'm so happy, Don. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to go crazy tonight, Tom. <laughs> right out of my mind. <laughs> Phil, this has got to be one of the greatest teams you've ever played for. You better believe it. I mean, I was really excited when I was on a first-place team in Chicago, but this outdoes everything. Man, there's nothing like this. But you know why? Because we've got a team that is together. If we go, if one guy goes to play golf, 17 guys are playing golf. If one guy's going for a beer, 17 guys are going for a beer. And you know that, Don, all year long. And this is what we've been doing, and it's paid off. A team effort all the way. All the way, Don. You couldn't pick one guy in this series or last series or the other series. It's been a team effort. I, I tell you, we, this is a great team. I hope we can keep the same team. I hope they can sneak a few guys through. You know? <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very Bill. much, Don. Thank have. you very much. Chief, come on. Here. here comes the w. <laughs> Johnny Bissick, it's been a long time waiting. Don, it's been a long time. It's been a long time for you. And right now, I want you to have a step. I feel like you're part of our club, and you got to have a shot right now. There you go. How sweet <laughs> now it is. Now you know what your announcer is like. How sweet it is. <laughs> Beautiful, isn't it? I've been waiting for 15 years for this, and the rest of the year, and the, I don't know. I don't think I'll be able to sleep for four days. Well, I don't think anybody in this town is going to sleep for four days. This is the greatest thing that's hit this town, well, in 29 years. That's right, Don, and it's something that uh, we, we, we all worked hard for, and it's something that I feel our fans deserve. They're loyal. They've been faithful to us. We've backed, a, backed us up. Uh, I know a lot of them played $100 to see this game today, and, and I just hope they, they got their money's worth. It was a heck of a game, and I, I can only say we came on top, and I'm just so thrilled, and I know they're happy, we're happy, and what else can you say? Well, we're happy, too. I know it's been a fantastic season for us. But uh, this is just the beginning, we feel, for the Boston Bruins. That's right, Don. Uh, we have a very young club. Uh, I hate to admit it, but I, I'm the oldest in age. But uh, I feel when you can score 20, 30 goals in this league, uh, we're going to be around for a couple more years. And with the club we got, uh, I feel we're going to be in the Stanley Cup for a few more years. Chief, again, our heartiest congratulations. A fantastic season for you personally. Your line played great all year long. Busick to or. He drives. Stops up on Busick. Oh! This, this is the mod man they call Derek. Tremendous series, Derek Sanderson. That's a great one to win, Don Beavis. Fantastic. Like I said before, the only, only guy I think that deserves to score the winning goal in the Stanley Cup is Bobby Orr. All right, Derek. It's the fan, it's most fantastic player alive. Yeah, and ended up that way. <laughs> ended up that what way. You, say. you too, Derek. You deserve it. Too. Come on in here, Harry. You Harry, it's been a long season, but well worth it the way it finished. Hey, listen, Don, it's Mother's Day, right? right? And every player in this room thanks the day his mother ever bought him a pair of skates today, I'll tell you. <laughs> that is a good observation. You realize all, all the fines, all the trouble he's giving me that I know is worth it? It is worth it, isn't it, hey. Harry? <laughs> the two swingers won it. <laughs> Harry, you've won a, a few uh, cups as coach uh, in your career. This. This has got to surpass anything that you've you've ever gone through. Oh, I'll tell you, you're, you're not kidding there. This is there's nothing like this. Listen, every kid that puts them on in Canada looks forward to being fortunate to, enough to have a day like this. And I'll tell you, I'm so happy for these guys and myself. Uh, that that's just wonderful. I'm just so excited. I don't know if I'll ever get over it. The Blues, the Blues came here to play today. Listen, I would like to take the opportunity to congratulate the Blues, Blues on a fine effort. Look, sure we won three games, but I'll tell you, this team was playing as good a hockey as it's ever played in its life. Today we played as well as we can play and had all we could do to beat. That was a fine effort. And, it, and we knew that the St. Louis Blues hit a wouldn't quit. I, didn't like. I don't like getting hit there twice. They hit us well. They played a great game. Great game. Congratulations, Harry. Thanks, Don. Thank you. Derek, uh, what are you going to do this summer? I don't know. I got to do some things for uh, for drugs. That's about it. For kids, that's about all I'm going to do this uh, summer. Golf a lot and uh, do a little traveling, maybe. Relax. Enjoy yourself. We'll see you in London okay. in September. Peace, uh, Thanks peace very and much. Congratulations, Dallas. 
Hi, Don. You don't say much, but you get the job done beautifully on the ice. Wow. Tremendous series. Yeah, it was uh, kind of tight here today, but uh, I think we had it over the first three games, but it looked a little rough today for a while, Don. Yeah, it could have gone either way, the way that uh, third period ended up. Very much so, and it was uh, very warm out there today. I think that's the worst we've had this year. Kind of warm in here, too. Oh, well, well, there's a lot of booze flying around, too. Humidity's not You can good. take it in here. <laughs> Yeah, I think we'll catch up to it somewhere along the line. Dallas, congratulations. An absolutely tremendous day. Thank you Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Come on over here, Jimmy. Hey, Don, how are you? Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. From Oklahoma City to the Bruins and another banner year. Oh, that's just, that's just great. Again, I'm lost for words right now. And, of course, tremendous. this is a special day for you also, uh, being a brand-new daddy, Mother's Day. That's right, and uh, I don't know, it's two of the greatest things in my life just happened in one week, and it's getting pretty hard to take right now. Just great, Don. Just Congratulations, great. Jimmy, and we're looking forward to many more here in Boston in the years coming up. Well, I'll tell you, we, we've got the guys that can do it, I'll tell you right now. Just super guys. Thank, congratulations, Thank Jim. You, Don. Thanks Thank very, you much. very much, Jim Lawrence. Don Ari. Congratulations, Don. Thank you very much, Don. Well, the Stanley Cup is finally back in Boston. What can I say, Don? I, I'm at a loss of words right now. I really don't know what to say. As Harry said, every kid that ever puts on skates in Canada dreams of this day, but few ever get a chance to, to recall it and live it. Well, you know, my first biggest experience and, uh, was playing my first game of the National Hockey League, and this has got to be the, the utmost. I mean, I can't, I can't, I don't know how to put it in words. Well, enjoy it, as I'm sure you will. Come here, Gary Doke. How are you doing, Don? Doke, uh... You're enjoying today, and I'm sure that you, along with hundreds of thousands of everyone all over New England, is going to enjoy this for some time to come. That's right, Don. It's a great way to win it. We deserve to win it, and the guy that got the goal, he deserved to get it. It's it a great goal, Bobby. God, just super. What are your thoughts right now? What were your thoughts as uh, that puck went in the net? Oh, the time. I, actually, I was sitting on the bench. I didn't see it go in, but I seen everybody's hands go up in the air, and I knew he must have scored. And uh, this is the greatest thrill of my life to be here in Boston, and that's the the Stanley Cup. Congratulations, Thanks Doki. We'll see you later. Two new faces to the Boston Bruins this year, but two faces that played a very important part in the Stanley Cup returning to Boston. Don Marcotte, tremendous. Thanks, Donnie. Well, we had all the guys there. We started kind of slow, but we knew we, knew we were going to win it anyway. Really, we had a bunch of great guys here. Oh, it's just beautiful. Let's hope it's just the beginning. Oh, yeah, it's just beginning now. We'll get it for about the last, next five or six years, I think. Congratulations, oh, Don. Thanks, Donnie. Rick Smith, a tremendous goal to start things off, and you've had a tremendous year in series all the way. Very pleased. Uh, what more can you say than very pleased, really? But, uh, and more than, quite a thrill, quite a thrill. Congratulations, Rick. Thank you very much, Donnie. Right. Ace Bailey. Ace. Ace, come on in. Ace, no. you're enjoying it, I can tell. Jose, you betcha. <laughs> Just about as good as St. Louis. <laughs> Almost as good. <laughs> Ace, uh, it must have been a disappointment to you to not be able to participate due to uh, your ankle that you injured in the season, but... You're enjoying it just the same. This is quite a ball club. Oh, I'll tell you, I could have two broken ankles and I'd just be laughing right now. <laughs> Congratulations, Ace. Thank you very much, Enjoy Don. the cup. Johnny Busek, the 